a nice, lively time that way. And thank you, Margaret, for coming along to our candles today. We're going to turn to our Bible reading for today, which is taken from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. And it's page number 965, if you're using your core Bible. It's Matthew 1, chapter 18 to this. And God some people are awake this morning and listen. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18, not chapter 18, to verse 25. That will be a long reading indeed. And it's entitled in the ID, Joseph Accepts Jesus as His Son. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, Son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is con conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus, because he will save people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Amen. And may God add a blessing to his word this morning. Now that first Christmas, in some ways, may have been simple. There was no turkey with the trains. There was no advent calendar or tree adorned with decorations. No working out who was in whose bubble. Oh, that single day. Maybe this year, the Christmas we all experience, may be simpler too. But that's okay. Because as we will explore, it's a story of love. So far in our Advent series, we have considered the hope we celebrate at Christmas. How for generations the Messiah, Jesus, was expected. And we had that sense of anticipation, that waiting. We have also considered the joy we share at Christmas, looking at Mary and Elizabeth, and despite everything they were going through, how they took time and opportunity to praise God. Last week we explored the theme of peace, as we considered the angel visiting the shepherds in the fields, and explored how the peace we can experience at Christmas time is all made possible through relationship with Jesus. Today, we're briefly going to consider the angels once more appearing to Joseph, as we've just heard about in Matthew 1 18 to 25, and how, through the obedience of Joseph, in giving him the names instructed to, to him of Jesus. And Emmanuel, we will learn how this really does show the Christmas story is a story of divine love. Now, the first name we're going to be looking at this morning is the name Jesus. It's a name too that we refer to Jesus as all the time, and it might be so familiar with us that we don't give it second thought. However, at the time, there was a cultural element to the names given, where names had specific meanings. The name Jesus can be derived from
from the name Joshua, and it literally means God saves. This is God's message at Christmas. God saves. This is God's plan. He revealed to the angel, through the angel to Joseph, that she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because Jesus is going to save people from their sins. Through Jesus, there will be salvation for people. Across the Bible, we find people needing God, separated by the forbidden actions in the Garden of Eden, all because humankind decided to go their own way instead of trusting God. Since then, there was a hope promised to Abraham, and we see leaders, we see judges, we see kings, we see prophets, leaders, rulers of nations, good and bad, all turning away from God. It all comes back to this fallen human condition. And we see this in Joseph, in our Bible reading, naturally wanting to do his own thing and not stopping to listen to what God wanted to do. In verse 19 we see Joseph is looking for a quiet divorce, finding his own solution. But it is God who intervenes. It is God who sends the angel. The story shows that salvation is not coming from man or any scheme that we can have. We can't find our own way out. Instead of any plan Joseph may make, we see salvation comes from the Lord. It is God who saves. Now we all get things wrong. We all think we know best. And humanity turned away from God and separated from him, but ultimately lean to death. Humanity at this point in our story was at a really low point. It needed a saviour. It needed Jesus because Jesus saves. Bruno suggests that during childbirth, a Jewish mother would often cry out in the pains, the anguish of childbirth, Lord help. It's an earnest and primitive prayer which all of humanity may share. And I love the idea that the answer to that prayer, the answer to humanity's cry in those moments, Lord help, is Jesus. God saves. Today we recognise on the fourth week of Advent, we have a God of love. God who answers humanity's cry for help with salvation. But as well as being for all humankind, God does not force himself upon us. We have the choice that Joseph had, the choice of Adam and Eve, to either do our own thing or to follow God and accept salvation, which we all need to know personally. <coughs> if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know, God saves. I invite you to make that cry that Mary may have made, Lord help. And I'm sure that if you do, God will answer you. I invite you to take this time to thank God today. And if you're comfortable, to ask him for help. In a few moments, we're just going to listen to the well-known Christmas song. So let every nativity player think of it, away in a manger. It tells of the humble comings of Jesus to this world. And as the words appear, as we go through the verses, we'll hear, I love the Lord Jesus. And in that final verse, that prayer, be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask you to stay. Close by me forever, and love me, I pray. We're going to have some moments now to reflect. The words will come up on the screen as we listen to the tune. And I invite you to respond to God as you need to this morning.
Dear Lord, we just thank you that you are a God of love, that you never forsake us, and you are always near. Accept our prayers this morning, Lord. Help us to know you are there. Take us in your arms and comfort us. Lord, we thank you for all you do each day. Amen. So each week, uh, due to social distancing and restrictions, uh, we have been limited by what we can actually do live in the building. And it's a real shame because uh, I think, you know, sitting and watching things is not the same as being involved in things. Um, and we're just really sad that we've not been able to do that. Um, so we've uh, been blessed to watch um, lots of items on the screens and things like that. And I was really thinking about, oh, you know, could we do something live? What can we do that doesn't involve blowing an instrument singing, um, I, you know, I didn't want to break dance because I know Chris is obsessed with that at the moment and I was like, what else can we, can we do? And I was like, well maybe I could do a timbrel routine because I've done timbrel routines since I was seven and I was like, but do I really want to do it on my own? And do, does the core even like timbrels? And I was like, it's a way to sort of put people off and I just thought, actually I've realised this on Friday afternoon and then since then it's been a whirlwind. So instead, We've been blessed to have um, help from the Salvation Army's music department who have provided um, free resources. And this week I found a really interesting video because I found one of my friends in it. And uh, the blessing of technology is that many new things have been developed. We've seen some choirs that have been put together, singing companies that have been put together. Uh, but this is a, a quartet, an a cappella quartet of the song Deck the Halls. Um, and by the wonders of technology, my friend called Seb is actually singing all four parts. So this is just a nice light-hearted uh, uh, carol for you to just enjoy as you see Seb sing Death the Halls.